Diamond. Uh, Ned Yost, NL Central leading Brewers, swinging a snap out of their three-game slide against the Padres. Top three. Padres up two to one. Justin Germano has to turn and watch it fly off the bat of Ryan Braun. Solo shot just over the reach of Tomorrow Sledge. First major league shot. We're tied at two there. Bottom eight. Carlos Villanueva facing Russell Brandon with two on and two out. Charging Jeff Jenkins can't make the catch. One run comes in. Padres up six to two. Top nine, Trevor Hoffman in relief facing Kevin Mensch with two on and two out. The all-time saves leader against Mensch. It's a routine grounder down the third base line does Mensch. Kevin Kuzmanov makes a bat throw to second to load the bases. Brewers alive. Next batter, Gabe Gross draws a walk. 6-3 Padres. Next batter. Ricky Weeks pops out into foul territory. That is your ball game. Brewers losing streak stands at four as the Padres win at six to three. In the Brewers' problems, Astros could feel them. Try to snap a six-game losing streak taking on the Diamondbacks. Top four, Brandon Webb gets Craig Biggio. And then top six gets him again. Seven innings of work, seven hits, two earned runs, eight Ks. For Webb, bottom seven, Diamondbacks up 3-2, bases loaded, Eric Burns with an opportunity and making the most of it. Carlos Lee not tall enough, and the Diamondbacks go up 5-2, that's two runs score. Top eight, though, Carlos Lee, he gets those two runs right back with one swing of the bat. His 10th home run of the season, and the Astros within one. Top nine now, 5-4 D-backs, Jose Valverde in for the save. He gets Biggio, who struck out four times. And then Valverde gets Morgan Ensberg. 18 saves for Valverde. The Diamondbacks take this one 5 4 6. Uh, make that seven straight losses for Houston. Next stop is Minnesota. Blue Jays and Twins hooking up there. Bottom nine. Twins down 7 5, 2 on. Michael Kadire, the pride of Chesapeake VA. Luis Castillo and Jason Bartlett score. They tied it at seven. They went to extra innings. Top 11 still tied at seven. Alex Rios, no doubt about it. His 11th, remember he had an extra inning homer Thursday against Baltimore, 8-7 Jays. Bottom 11, twins down 8-7, runners at the corners. Justin Morneau up the middle, Royce Clayton stepped to second for one, throw to first is late, Jason Bartlett scores, so game tied at eight after 11, they played on. Top 13, Lyle Overbay with a base hit, four RBI for Overbay, the Jays are going to win it 9-8. Leading Cleveland, swinging to win a game against Detroit for a second straight day. Great pitching matchup. Justin Verlander against CC Sabathia. Combined 11 wins coming into Saturday. Bottom two, Marcus Tibbs. He breaks his bat, but still hits a home run. His fourth of the year, nearly 400 feet away. And check out the bat splinter. Tigers up one to nothing. Top two. Actually, top five, tied at two. Justin Verlander gets Grady Sizemore swinging and then gets Casey Blake on the check swing. Six innings, two earned, five Ks, four walks, and a no decision. Bottom five, Sabathia gets Omar Infante swinging and then gets Yvonne Rodriguez, two. Sabathia, seven innings, three earned, six Ks. Top eight, tied at three, David DeLucci with a runner on board, and that is gone off Jason Grilly. DeLucci, second of the year, tribe up five to three. Bottom nine, Joe Borowski in to close it out with two on and two out. Curtis Granderson pops up to Casey Blake in foul territory, and that is your ball game. Indians win and get to 500 on the road and lead the AL Central. While all the other New Yorkers are in the Hamptons, the Yankees were in the Bronx taking on the Angels. Chin Min Wong getting the start. For the Yankees, one top one. four scorers, runners on the corners, Gary Matthews Jr., that's going to be trouble. It's going to be a triple. Reggie Willits, Vladimir Guerrero will score. Angels go up 2-0. They've outscored their opponents 52-19 in the first inning this season. We move to the bottom seven now. Angels up 3-1. Doug Minkiewicz up. And check out Willits. What you talking about? Willits up against the wall. And he makes the grab. He had missed the previous two games with a tight hamstring. Looks pretty loose there. Calvin Escobar, glad to have the help. Seven innings of work, eight Ks, just one iron run. Bottom nine now. Runners on the corners. 1-1 one, one count on Bobby Abreu. Oh, that looked a little low, but Jeff Nelson calls it a strike. Next pitch. Now, check this one out. Francisco Rodriguez just a bit outside, but Nelson rings him up. Let's see that from above. And that looks outside. How is that a strike? Abreu is third strike out of the game. K-Rod with his 15th save, and the Angels win it 3-1. to Yanks 11 and a half out. As for the other New York team, Carlos Delgado's Annalise leading Mets getting to win a sixth straight at Dolphin Stadium against the Marlins. Top three with one aboard. It's Delgado, his fourth home run of the season. This off Wes Obermuller. First home run and 47 at-bats for Delgado, and New York's up 4-1. to 
top five with two aboard. Delgado, yard. We're watching nearly 900 feet of home runs. And it's worth another look here. Home run number one, 451 feet. Number two, 427. Delgado with his 41st multi-home run game of his career. And New York's up 7-1. to one. Bottom six. Miguel Cabrera lining one towards the hole. David Wright is there. And this is worth another look. Wright in support of John Main. Six innings, two earned, eight Ks. Mets win 7-2. to And move a season-high three and a half games up on the Braves. To take on the Rangers. We're picking a bottom five. Sox up two to one. Gerald Laird down the line to the wall. Frank Catalanato and Ian Kinsler coming around. Terry Francona won an interference called. And take a look at why the ball girl, she was doing her best to get out of the way. I don't know if it hit her or not, but <laughs> she tried to get out of the way. Tim Wakefield, five hits, four runs in seven innings. Top six, Sox down 4-2. Manny being Manny, 0-2 pitch. Kevin Euclid comes home, triple for Manny, stuck the landing. Still top six, tied at four. Coco Crisp bringing J.D. Drew home. Sox going to win at 7-4. Ramirez, four for four in the ballgame. Phillies and the Braves. Ryan Howard's Philadelphia club with a shot to get over the 500 mark again. 0 for 4 in their previous bids. Top two Braves up one to nothing. Howard lining sharply to Kelly Johnson at second. That's a top play nominee as the play gets made. Bottom three, some controversy. Willie Harris. And he chops one down the first base line. First base umpire Ron Culpa rules the ball foul. Atlanta manager Bobby Cox disagrees and comes out to argue. Check it out. The ball appears to go just foul. Cox gets tossed for a second straight game and the 130th time in his career. That's one shy of the all-time record. And then John Smoltz chirping in from the dugout gets tossed too. Top seven, 5-4 Phillies with one out. Shane Victorino. His third of the season. Phillies win 6-4 to four and get over 500. Cubs and Dodgers. Carlos Zambrano on the bump. He's sporting a 0.38 career ERA and 23 and two-thirds innings pitched at Dodger Stadium. Coming in bottom four with two on. For Luis Gonzalez, Zambrano rings him up. Inning over. To the eighth we go. Bottom eight. Two on for L.A. Down 4-1. Nomar Garcia para singles. That'll score Almedo signs. And L.A. is down 4-2. to two. Could it be another Cubs bullpen meltdown? Approaching. Next batter, Zambrano walks Russell Martin to load the bases. And then Lou Pinella gets him. Seven and two-thirds. Eight hits. Two earned. Eight Ks. Will Owen comes in to face pinch hitter Jeff Kent. Gets the strikeout to end the inning, and Zambrano's digging it. Dodgers threatening in the ninth. Two on, one out. Ryan Dempster gets signs to ground into the game-ending double play. Zambrano improving to 5-4 and four this season as the Cubs double up the Dodgers 4-2. Moino, to bueno, number 10. Cubs and Dodgers. Derek Lee over to third. Now, Wilson Betterman's throw leaves something to be desired, but can't say the same about Nomar's catch. Garcia Parra, the snag and tag, but the Dodgers go down 4-2. I'll take that top D and uh, top you right here. Number nine, A's Orioles. Check out Brian Roberts. Barehanding, making the throw in time. Worth another look. Orioles win 8-3. to three. Cal State Fulton in Arizona. Candace Baker down the line. Kaylee Arredondo says, give me that. Arizona wins 11-6. Number 7, MLS Wizards Revolution. Eddie Johnson with the hat trick for the KC Wizards. Scored his first two goals in the first half. His third goal, the deciding goal, mind you, in the 82nd minute of the second half, helping the Wizards win 4-3. to three. Number 6, more softball, Texas A&M and Florida. Roussel sends one deep, and it's gone! A walk-off home run by Lauren Roussel in the bottom of the seventh inning. And the Gators win game two. And she's rocking the helmet like Tim Tebow. Number five, Mets Marlins. Two on for Jose Reyes down the third baseline. Miguel Cabrera in full denial mode. Great D there, but not enough to win. Marlins fall 7-2. Number four, Brewers and Padres. You saw Jeff Jenkins struggle with a catch earlier. But look at that one. Too bad the Padres won, though, 6-3. Number three, Chuck Iceman Liddell against Quentin Rampage Jackson. Battle for the UFC Light Heavyweight Championship. This fight did not last long. Jackson just abusing Liddell. 
a good thing Liddell got his entourage cameo, because he won't get it now. Jackson, the new UFC light heavyweight champion. Number two nationals and Cardinals, bases loaded for Felipe Lopez. Chris Duncan had blown a play earlier in this inning, but not this one. Great grab for Duncan. Cardinals going to win at 8-6. And our top play, Cornell Duke lacrosse. Trying to carry it in. Peter Lomity, a feed. Greer shoots, he scores! Zach Greer scores for Duke! With three seconds left, the Blue Devils have the lead back. Unbelievable. Considering all the Phillies have been through, a sweep in Atlanta this week would be quite something. Ryan Howard said, I'm finally 100%, and it certainly appears that way. Three for four on the day, two home runs. This one gave the Phillies a lead. That ball is hit pretty hard. Top three, 4 1 Phillies. Greg Dobbs bid for his second home run of the day, but there is a reason Andrew Jones has won nine consecutive gold gloves. Look at that. I mean, that is as good as it gets up and over. Sometimes it sort of looks like they would have stolen a home run. That, would have, that, that was a home run. Steve Smith takes Dobbs' helmet. He was in disbelief, I think. Cole Hamels said uh, the health of Howard is certainly important and it also helps when you've got those numbers 223 strikeouts his first 33 career starts the third most by a lefty in a hundred years Jeff Francoeur becomes a victim here in the bottom of the first Scott Thorman in the second Jared Saltalamachia hard downer can't get that Kelly Johnson strikes out as well Hamels moves to seven and two he had eight K's on the day he's five and one in his last six starts. Oh, happy day. And after a rough start to the season, the Phillies have become more like the team some thought they'd be. And David Wright, who hopes to roll with Brock and Chess, doing some Marlin fishing down in Florida. Scott Olson knows that the Mets batting against lefties 334 clip. That's the best in the bigs. He took him 44 pitches to get out of the fourth inning. This is right here. Jeremy Hermita can't get it to it. Carlos Beltran safe at second. Right had two hits in an RBI. Your next batter is Carlos Delgado, and he picks on Olsen, goes to right. Hermida comes up with it, but Beltran scores. We're tied one. The next batter is Damian Easley, and the runners have advanced to second and third after a double steal. And he goes to Dan Ugla, who goes ugly with the throw. Easily safe. Right and Delgado score. And the Mets are up three to one. Bottom six. It's five two, two on, two out. Pedro Feliciano gets Hanley Ramirez to ground to David Wright. The Mets win at 6-4. They've got a season-high four-and-a-half game lead in the NL East. Final score in this one looked like the Steelers and the Bengals. Kirk Sarlus, well, it was it, it all went terribly wrong when he took the ball in the top of the first. Adam LaRoche had a hit. Every starter had at least one. Then it's Jason Bay. He was three for five. Seventh home run makes it five nothing Pirates. They had a season high 18 hits. Jerry Naren comes out to take the Pearl. Sarlus gives up five runs without retiring a batter. The ERA goes up nearly two runs to over seven. Bottom seven though. Here come the Reds. Adam Dunn, man could yank a tree out of the ground with his bare hands. Second of the game, 14th of the season. Reds pull within two. He was three for five, four RBI. But then, wouldn't you know it, in a game with 24 runs and 33 hits, it's a defensive gem that ends the game. Right there, Jose Batista makes a diving. The baseball, Colorado with a chance for its first ever sweep of San Francisco in San Francisco in franchise history. That's Barry Bonds, who singled. Taylor Buckles didn't check on him, thought the wheels were, were flat. You're wrong. Bonds gets his second steal of the season, but was stranded. This is this is what people pay to see Bonds do. High, deep, and finally gone. Back on the home run train. The 439th pitcher Bonds has taken out the 746th of his career. And when he hit it, you didn't know if he was posing or kind of hoping. Did I get it? Did I get it? Well, the folks in the stands seem to believe it, and they were right. He moves closer to Henry Aaron, first home run since May 8th. Game goes to extras. We are tied at four. Runner on second for the Rockies, Troy Tulowitzki, who was two. He was still trying to get in his big boy pants when Barry Bonds broke into the bigs. Tulowitzki brings home the go-ahead run in Kaz Matsui, and Tulowitzki heads up base running, gets to second on the Fred Lewis throw home, and the Rockies played another run, so it's 6-4. Bonds on first after walk bottom 10. That holiday squeezes the Benji Molina line drive. Brian Fuentes, his 11th save of the month. As for Bonds, Pedro Gomez caught up with him. Best record in baseball, the worst record in the American League. It's Boston at Texas. Red Sox haven't busted out their three-game road brooms in Texas since 1973. Frank Catalanato, two out, two on, four, three Rangers. Coco Crisp, look at me. I can be center field. Top nine, Boston up 5-4. Eric Gagne against Dustin Pedroia. 2-2 two -two count. 
And these are one of those at bats that you 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 don't read about in a box score. It's the number nine hitter. He's just up there being gutty, fouling off pitch after pitch. He fouls off 11 pitches, and the 12th pitch from Gagne is the first run allowed by Gagne in 11 appearances this season. Just the second home run of the season for Pedroia. It's 6-4. Then Hideki Okajima came in because Jonathan Papelbon, he pitched Saturday. Okajima gave up two hits and a run. 6-5 game. Sammy Sosa, the winning run. He flies out. The Red Sox win 6-5, and they sweep Texas. Angels trying to break out the brooms in the Bronx. See, Will Nieves, one for 27. Not, not much this year. Well, how about a two for two day and a big hit early that gives the Yankees the lead. We move to the seventh, Yanks up 2-1. After a walk, Mike Messina pulled after 95 pitches. Teammates and the fans showing him some love. It was a gutty effort, but then Scott Proctor comes in, gives up a double and a walk. Now it's an 0-2 pitch to Eric Ibar. Looked like it might have been a strike. Wasn't called a strike, but then speaking of a gritty at bat, Ibar just fouled off pitches, fouled off pitches, and finally ball four, and the game is tied at twos, and that really seemed to undo Proctor because the next batter is Sean Figgins, and on five pitches, he walks in the go-ahead run, and here comes Joe Torre, and you know they call it the Bronx cheer. It sounds like this. Rough times in the boogie down. Hideki Matsui, a grounder to first that gets John Lackey out of the inning with the tying run on second base. Now, speaking of a gutty at bat, Derek Jeter's up there. Tenth pitch of the at bat, a full count pitch. Jeter hits it hard. Not enough wood on it. Gary Matthews squeezes it. The Angels get the win. They sweep the Yankees. Said Jeter, we're not giving up. The Yankees have lost 11 of their last 16. They're a season where six games under 500. They're 12 and a half games behind the Red Sox. Furthest they've been out of first since September of 95. That was before Joe Torre got there, and there's so much talk about Roger Clemens. He might be able to help, but you wonder how much can a guy that pitches every fourth or fifth day do to a team that's in a situation like this? A sweep for Cleveland in Detroit would send quite a message. 2-0 this season, Cleveland is against the Tigers, 6-13 last year. And here, Ryan Garko just smokes a shot off Mike Moroth, his seventh. And it's 4-0 the top of the first. In the third, Fausto Carmona has been tough to touch this year. Got filthy stuff, but here, 3-2 fastballs up. Craig Monroe brings in Omar Infante. Next batter is Gary Sheffield. Johnny Peralta is able to stop it, but no outs. Curtis Granderson scores. Next batter is Maglio Ordonez, who's having just a fantastic pre-Memorial Day start to his season, and there's another base hit. Three in a row, made it four to three, but that was the extent of the Detroit offense in this one. Bottom eight, their last best shot, runners on the corner, Raphael Betancourt strikes out Brandon Inge, and the Indians get it done. Twins and Blue Jays have traded one run wins this series. A.J. Burnett's won three starts in a row, entering this contest with the Twins, and here he said, I made a mistake and it cost us. Fields the, the chopper barehanded and chucks it away. Justin Morneau slides in safely. Luis Castillo and Nick Punto come in to score. Take another look at the slot by Morneau. Kind of a half fall, and the, 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 the boys on the bench are loving it. Said Blue Jays skipper John Gibbons, it was the Justin Morneau show. That's why he's the MVP, and this is more what we are accustomed to, to seeing. This is a big-time deal here, a two-run home run. His fourth in five games, his 15th of the season. Why? Because he goes master shake on it. He was sitting on it, and he took it out. Morneau propels the Twins to the 4-2 win. Milwaukee. Brewers a bit flat. They've lost four straight, 10 of their last 13. Brewers at San Diego facing a bubbly Jake Peavy. This is Jake Peavy, the hitter, against Jeff Supon, and he doubles. And he says it was huge. It gave me some breathing room. 2-0 lead, and 2-0 and is a lot of breathing room. Just as Tony Gwynn Jr. and Ryan Braun, and then Gabe Gross. Peavy, 6-1 on the season. MLB leading low ERA, and it's going limbo low. Ask Prince Fielder, ask Gabe Gross again, ask J.J. Hardy. Turns 26 Thursday, began the party on Sunday. Seven innings, two hits, no runs, eight Ks, and the Padres win 3-0 there. Illness here. <laughs> Lou Pinnell and the Cubs looking to finish up a West Coast trip, 3-3, three and three, top seven. Scoreless, Matt Merton pops one up behind the plate. Russell Martin will go into the stands, and he'll catch it and end up, whoops, the end of the crowd. Said he landed on a woman. He said she was like a fourth-degree black belt in 
Karate. She was all right, so is he. Still scoreless. Bottom eight. Dodgers down one nothing after Derek Lee RBI single. Andre Ether an 0-2 pitch off Scott Air into the thin air. Tie game at one. Now the 11th. Mark DeRosa will line one to right center. Juan Pierre on his giddy up. Nice diving grab right there. Bottom 11. Bases loaded for Pierre. And this is a bizarre ending. Hit by pitch. Carlos Marmol hits him. Lou Pinella doesn't like the call. If we take another look, the ball will carry him into Pierre's.